Hello my fellow YouTube nurses, YouTube dads, YouTube sons, daughters, and brothers, and everybody. Male reps, we gotta get together, alright? So let's talk about this. Let's talk about diabetes, alright? I figured it's gonna be an important subject. It's an epidemic. Everybody has at least a couple family members that have diabetes. I do. Hispanics is really large. It's, it's just going crazy with us and African Americans. So we gotta make sure we talk about diabetes and how important it is. My grandpa has it. It led to neuropathy, retinopathy. It led to uh, kidney failures. It led to a lot of things. So I figured I'm gonna educate you guys. And as a nurse, um, it's important to educate, educate, educate. That's the first important thing my teachers always said. You gotta educate. That's what your job. You gotta teach. You teach. So I figured we'd talk about it. Let's talk about type 1, type 2. Type 1 is insulin dependent, meaning your pancreas does not secrete insulin and it can't break down the sugars. Type 2 is um, basically you secrete just enough insulin so your body can utilize the sugar and make energy out of it so your body and your brain can get it. So it's, it's, it's in between. Type 2 it could lead to type 1. Type 2, you can reverse it by exercise, eating correctly, carbohydrates, not simple, but complex, and also protein, and uh, you know, taking your medications such as metformin, glucophage, and those help to kind of reverse it, but you got to make sure you exercise with type 2. Type 1, you don't make any more uh, insulin. So it's important to make sure that if you have type 1, you regulate blood sugar, check it right before you eat, which is three or four times a day or whatever. And so the beautiful thing about the pancreas is it secretes, there's two things it does, secretes insulin to break down the blood sugars and digestive enzymes. Now these are the two important things, your pancreas does a lot more, but those are the two, more important, two most important things it does. And so the digestive enzymes that come from the pancreas breaks down your food. And the second thing, like I said earlier, was the insulin. So picture this, okay? Picture someone eating a cheeseburger, they break it down in their stomach, and the only way to get energy from that is the pancreas secretes those little insulins. If you guys remember from anatomy, you know that the alpha and beta cells, you guys remember all that. And it breaks down the sugar. So it's grinding up, making all that sugar, and utilizes that sugar as energy. Feeds your brain, feeds your body, so you can move around and walk and just make it through the day without feeling lethargic, tired, or fatigued. So that helps. Now, that's what you need. Now, listen to this. If you don't have insulin, and let's just say you didn't even know you have type 1 or whatever, and this is how people usually find out they have diabetes. So if, you're, if you can't bring down the sugars, your body needs to break something down for energy. So it breaks down your own muscle, your own fats, and your body goes into an acidotic state because you don't have energy. So people who have diabetes can't break down food, so they're consistently thinking they're hungry. They keep eating food, 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 which is called pelophagia. So they keep eating, 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 eating. And their brain's like, why are you not full? You're still hungry. So then all of a sudden you keep thinking you're thirsty. So you drink a lot of water because your body can't break down sugar. So you have go, what, you go into what's called polyphagia, polyuria. Now if you're drinking and eating, you're going to go pee a lot. So you're going to diurese and you're going to go into what's called polyuria. Uh, um, so, so you have polyuria, polydipsia, polyphagia. So you're eating, drinking, and you're pissing the whole time, and you don't even know why. And what happens? Your body starts breaking down the fats and the muscle, and you go into an acidotic state. You have Kussmaul breathing, which is slow, deep breaths, trying to catch that breath, trying to get oxygen in and let out all the CO2. And your kidneys and your lungs are trying to compensate at this point. Now, that's what happens. And then all of a sudden, you go in a coma because you're just in an acidotic state like I mentioned earlier and that's really bad so there's two bad things that could happen you could either go in a coma and that's what happens you go to the doctors the hospital ER and they find out whoa okay you're a diabetic they check your blood sugar it's above seven eight hundred and at that point they're gonna do your hourly blood checks they're gonna push fluids to clear up all that blood volume of you have because it's pure sugar and then they're going to clean that up. Then they're also going to give you IV insulin. And then here's another complication. When you're given insulin to break down the sugar and use it for energy, what is it doing? It's taking out potassium too. And potassium, your heart needs to regulate itself too. So if you have too high or too low potassium, your heart can go into dysrhythmia. That's a different thing. But it's important. This is what complications can lead to. And after that, they're going to have to do an ECG, make sure your heart is correctly, it's pumping right. And they're going to have to do hourly outputs because your kidneys are high vascular and if you don't have enough blood going to it you can go into kidney failure so they got to watch all these give you potassium make sure your blood's regulated um, they're gonna give you ABGs to make sure you're breathing correctly so it's a lot of complications that can lead from a diabetic coma now those are what happens and that's what happens when you're in the hospital and you figured out damn I have diabetes so once you know you have diabetes you have to regulate it 
Here's the complications that could happen if you don't regulate um, your blood sugars. Okay, now picture this. All right, here's another thing I'm gonna draw for you guys. Picture this. Um, your blood sugar. Okay, imagine a river or flowing water. Beautiful water, right? It flows really well. Now, that's how your body needs to flow with blood. Just flows, circulates, perfuses all your, your organs, everything. Now, imagine an oil filter, or not filter, but oil water just flowing down. It takes forever and a day just to go down, okay? Because it's thick. That's your blood sugar. It's thick. So, if it's thick and it has sugar, it can't perfuse the organs. And what's a highly vascularity organ? Your kidneys, okay? And your eyes and your toes and your digitals your fingers those are the high vascular areas which is when you have diabetes it's unable to perfuse those so that's why you have neuropathy which is on your lower fingers your toes everything like that they can't they go numb you can't feel it you can't feel any pain nothing another thing too is your kidneys are high in vascularity so that means you can go into kidney failure because they're unable to perfuse your kidneys they can't uh, uh, perfuse and reach enough blood so then it can't do its function. And what do kidneys do? They filter your own blood. So it leads to a lot of complications. That's why people with diabetes who don't regulate it, the blood sugar is really high or through the roof. They go blind because these are really tiny blood vessels and thick blood, which is like oil, can't get through. They can't reach and oxygenate your eyes and your kidneys. So you need to regulate your blood sugar, take all that sugar out of your blood so it becomes nice and thin, not all thick and nasty with sugar and it can't reach high vascular areas such as your eyes, your kidneys, and your toes, and all that. And the reason why I say that is because it can lead to other complications. If your kidneys don't work, okay, and they can't perfuse, what happens? Your blood can't filter. And what happens if your blood can't filter and you can't pee out anything? You start building up toxins, then your heart has to work harder because that blood volume increases, your blood pressure goes up, your heart rate goes up just to um, utilize and control your, your blood pressure. So your heart rate goes up, your blood has to pound a lot harder than it is. It has to work through that gradient. Your kidneys are unable to function properly. And then you might go blind because of the sugar diabetes, or the sugar diabetes, the sugar in the blood uh, is increased. So at least there's so many complications. That's why I say it's important to regulate it. And if you have type two, exercise, take your meds, eat appropriately, and um, make sure you control it guys, it's important because you can reverse this. Type 1 you can't, type 2 you can, make sure you don't lead and go any further than that. Um, before I go any further, let's talk about hypoglycemia and that's important to talk about because um, you know if you have too low blood sugar that's important which can lead to, you know, you, if you don't know what it is, it can lead to complications such as nausea, uh, chills, confusion, dizziness, and uh, that's pretty bad too and if someone goes in a situation like that you quickly give them glucagon it's a shot basically it's pure sugar and it helps them to go back up you regulate it you make sure you check the blood sugars uh, complex carbs protein guys i'm gonna end it on that note if you guys have any questions you guys let me know i hope you guys learned something here with this educational video i'll see you guys soon peace my fellow youtube nurses check your blood sugars